editing stream. No, it is not an editing stream. It is better than an editing stream. It is an already edited stream. Let me explain. We throw away quite a lot of content. What do you do with the offcuts? Well, the main channel's no good. Second channel has become no longer a place for trash posting. I figure, why not just show some of the stuff on stream? A third channel. I ain't doing a third channel. I'm a busy man. Busy. I'm gonna walk you through this video that we never released because I just didn't feel that it it was up to up to muster. All of this really really rough. Gonna be pretty cringy, starting from the beginning. First, we created an alias as Mr. Burns. As you know, it takes a while to produce these videos, so we decided to extradite the videos by outsourcing everything. We we gonna come up with an idea? No. We we gonna write a script? Nope. We aren't even going to edit it. We will let strangers on the internet do it. So we fielded a bunch of suggestions for genres. Narrowed them down to a few. Then put them as a poll on Twitter. Then we did the same thing for a scenario. And then again for a device character. This one was a mistake. Too hot for YouTube. Now that the people have spoke we take this idea to Fiverr. So here's the plan. First, we have someone write the short story with these elements. Then we get someone to turn it into a script. Then we ask Twitter again for movie cliches. Then we took the best of them and gave them to a second script editor that will get it to a cleaner state. Then we send it to Pyongyang's finest animation studio. Where they'll work their absolute hardest to bring our vision to life. And then gave it all to an editor. Then handed it over to a SFX artist that would add the final touch. This is what they made. So you get the premise, right? We thought, oh fuck, what if we just did the Sundance Rejects? Where we did none of the work. However, it got much more complicated. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike Coxmore. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. We, we got through the script writing process. We went, this kind of makes sense, so we, then we sent it to another scriptwriter. They still hadn't finished the story by that point, and needed to be longer, so we sent it to another scriptwriter. And by the end, I think we sent it to half a dozen scriptwriters. So we then hired one final scriptwriter, and it was this guy who claimed to be, like, a movie producer in, in LA. Why he's on Fiverr, I've got absolutely no idea. It came back as, like, the worst <laughs> piece of writing we'd ever seen and we thought oh fuck okay we're gonna have to do some of the editing here because if we just if we just let someone else refine it they're gonna edit out all the mistakes but then we can't choose the assets we actually did a live stream on i can't remember if it was twitch or youtube i'm pretty sure it was youtube and then we just went through piece by piece and said okay we need a desk send me a desk and then you know 50 people would send a picture of a desk and then we would pick it at random. And then we'd do that with what the character looks like and all that sort of stuff. So it would end up becoming more sort of randomized. I did the VO for this stuff, but we also uh, hired out some of the voice actors and it was just not fit for publish on the second channel. Um, but I present to you uh, <laughs> Sundance Rejects, the one that never made it. He said, give me, a, give me a picture of a city. Yeah, brilliant. Here you go. <laughs> Interior, bar, night. Shigekazu sits at a table, running his fingers around the edge of a glass cup on the table in front of him. This is the protagonist, right? This is the main character. And, and we said, okay, can you vote on the main character? And we ended up with a tie between the background character from SpongeBob and... Hideo Kojima and and so the result was okay we're just gonna have to splice them together so they ended up being well what you see before you running his fingers around the edge of a glass cup on the table in front of him a guy sits at the table next to him smoking a cigar loud fast music blares from the speaker at the bar 
Shigekasu doesn't look so comfortable being here tonight. He gets on his feet to start leaving when he sees a hot lady sitting at the bar staring at him. He contemplates for a beat whether or not to go and speak to her. He will. She's too hot to pass. Shigekasu begins to amble towards the lady. Uh, he reaches the bar and sits by the lady's side. Hey. He notices she's trying to hide a piece of paper. What is that? She quickly folds the paper into her bag. Hmm? Nothing. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> this is great. It's all flooding back to me. So we <laughs> we decided to hire for the voice actress um, a professional anime voice actor. Just some bullshit work papers. Okay. Rough day, huh? Maybe a drink? Well... Shigekazu signals the waiter to come over. Maybe. I'll take a maybe. What drink changes that answer to a definite? Very smooth. Shigekazu moves closer to the lady. Tequila? Patron. Alright, two shots of Patron, please. <laughs> the script says Patron, but she doesn't know how to pronounce Patron, right? Because it's not as it's... As it's spelt, it's not phonetic. But he he knew, so <laughs> she goes, Patron, please. <laughs> yeah, no trouble. Can I have some Patron? Silver or gold, said the waiter. The waiter leaves and returns with two Patron <laughs> shots, two limes and a salt shaker. <laughs> Such Lady ignores the limes and salt and shoots the tequila shot, uh, eliciting laughter from Shigekazu. <laughs> 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 what? Am I drinking alone? Shigekazu downs his drink with the assistance of salt and lime. They both push the glasses to the waiter for a refill. What happened then we discovered is the next six minutes of script was so goddamn boring. <laughs> like, it was painful. It just became about her job as a journalist. Like, this is really what the script writer wrote. He wrote, Yes, I am a famous journalist who works at the New York Times, the Washington Post, and even the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> and as amusing as those lines were, it just go it just goes like on and on, and it actually starts to get into this thing about her fighting with her boss and how she actually wants to have creative freedom and yada 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 yada. We decided to cut all that, and we just skipped forward to where the script gets great. Apartment night. Roxanne leads Shigekazu to a barely lit room. She presses her lips against his and starts to kiss him. She pushes him into a chair, picks a rope, apparently, and ties his hands to it. Roxanne you can't send me a rope? Yeah, no Shigekazu problem. Nurse around, rope. Wondering where she's gone to. Shigekazu says, Roxanne? There's no response. Roxanne? No response still. Shigekazu starts to look pretty uncomfortable. His heart's racing very fast. We see drops of sweat begin to build on his face. Just then, he hears footsteps approaching from behind. Who is that? Roxanne ties a piece of cloth around his mouth and ties his legs to the chair. She walks away and turns on the light to reveal a slaughterhouse. <gasps> what oh, a no. twist! A sketch of all Roxanne's victims are displayed on the board. She starts to make a new sketch. Reality hits Shigekazu. The rest of this, basically, it's all written by this LA producer writer guy. And the script just takes a massive nosedive. This guy took the previous story, which is about actually like this female serial killer who's, you know, by a day job, a journalist. And he just, just takes it completely left and just goes, ah, another direction. <laughs> and all of the pronunciation of the mistakes and all that sort of stuff has to be left in. We told the voice actors, Exactly as it's written, you have to say it. If it says noting instead of nothing, you have to say noting. So, it begins uh, where we left off. Is there anybody over there that can help me? No response, no answers. Someone work in saliently, Shigekazu shout. Who is that? Roxanne says. Wow, I know you're scared. Sorry, I was just think. And see what's going on with you. Shigekazu says. Why do you do this? Roxanne says. Noten, just playing with you. Shigekazu. That is very bad. Come and unties me, Roxanne. 
Roxanne moves close to Shigekazu and unties, and Shigekazu asks a question from him. Shigekazu says, Do you have anybody in your mind that is your thinking about every day? Roxanne says, Yes, a friend of mine, that he's very nice to me, and just die anyhow. I don't know how it happened. His blood is on my hand. Shigekazu says, How? Can you tell me more about that? Interior, apartment. So it now goes into a flashback. Day. The cut zoom in and out for flashback how it happened. There was a guy. His name is Bobby. I know him in school. He's very nice and honest. He give me any I need. Interior home outside. Bobby come out of the door and close the door when Roxanne called to him to ask. Question. Roxanne call him. Bobby. Phone raining. Wow, can that be... Oh, Roxanne, why is she calling this time? Bobby, pick the call. Roxanne says, Hello, Bobby. Have been calling you. Bobby says, Oh, really? I don't know. Roxanne says, Check your phone. Bobby says, I'm sorry, dear. Roxanne says, Where are you, Bobby? <coughs> Bobby says, I'm home, but I'm going out now. Roxanne says, But you know we have a date. And you promised... You're taking me out to start to buy something for me, honey. Bobby says, Oh yeah, you just reminded me about that. Okay, can I come over to your house so we can go out together, honey? Roxanne. Yes, thanks, dear. Bobby. You're welcome. <laughs> there was a guy, his name is Mike. Bobby friend. Bobby moved out of the house and Mike take never a comes up in the story again. to the store to buy a drink. Hey, are you going down the street to the store area? The cap says, I can't air you. Bobby says, I'm going to the nearest store. Cap says, okay, come in. Bobby crests to the other side to enter the car. Interior, Roxanne, apartment. Roxanne is prepare a nice food for his Bobby. She on the gas and put pout and add water and close the pout. Roxanne Every time the spelling mistake's the same. Room. She start cleaning the living room, but on knowing that the gas light is off, she keep cleaning the living room. Okay, so basically what's happened is she's going to cook a lovely meal for her booby, and um, she's put the pot on the stove, but the gas has gone out, and so the gas is actually leaking into the room. And so she's cleaning the rest of the apartment, and she doesn't know that the gas is just leaking into the apartment. <gasps> Quite a deadly situation, someone might say. Seven, exterior, front. Bobby come down from Cap and give the Cap man money. Cap man drive on. Move Crest to the other side. He greet. <laughs> He's about to greet his friend. And I just want you to make a guess at what his friend's gonna look like. <laughs> Cause you're not gonna get it. Can you just give us a generic looking dude? Yeah, no problem. And then this is what we ended up with. Beat someone outside the store before he enter. Bobby says, Hey, how are you doing, Jams? Jam says, Finding you. Longest time, Bobby. What are you up to? Bobby says, <laughs> I don't know yes, why the voice acted with that voice. Here to get my baby a nice drink. And you? Jam says, Yes, I'm here to get a cigarette. Bobby says, Oh, do you have it now? Jam says, Yes. Bobby says, can I have just four? Can I have Jam just says, four of your cigarette? Jams gives Bobby four cigarette. Bobby says, Thanks. I need to move fast. My baby will be waiting for me. Jam says, All right. Save me hi to her. Bobby says, Okay. Bobby move into the store and get all he want for Roxanne. Number eight. Interior car. Bobby as for lighter from the cap man. Bobby. <laughs> hey, do you have a lighter? Cap man. Yes. What do you want to use it for? Bobby says, I need it for a cigarette. Catman says, You can't take the cigarette here, sir. When you come down, I will give you. Bobby says, Okay, no problem. Thanks. Catman says, You're welcome. Catman keep driving. Interior, Roxanne's apartment. Roxanne is asleep in the living room. <gasps> oh, no. Number 10, exterior. Catman driving close to Roxanne house. Catman drive to Roxanne, back to her house. Bobby come down from the cap and pay the cap. He ask for the lighter again. Bobby says, 
This is your money. Catman says, thank. Bobby says, can I have the lighter now? The driver gives the lighter to Bobby and make use of it. Bobby wants to surprise Roxanne. He wants to pass through the kitchen. He opened the door and the gas explode. No. Zoom in the cream to the exploitation. Zoom in the camera to the explosion. Brilliant. Number 12, interior, <laughs> apartment, night. Roxanne stopped the story. Shige Kazu asked Roxanne a question. Shinge Kao? Did Bobby die? Roxanne says, I don't know, because I find myself in hospital. I wake up after five days. Shige Kazu says, you, you didn't check? Says, Really, since then, you haven't seen him? Roxanne says, Yes. So he's, Shige so he's Kazu move close to Roxanne and ask a question. Shige Kazu says, I want to say something, and I don't know how you will feel if I say it. Roxanne holds Shinge Ka Kazwu hand and look his face. Shige Kazu says, Close your eyes. Roxanne says, You mean I should close my for what? Shige Kazu says, Close it. Roxanne close her eyes, and Shige Kazu tell her what's in his mind to Roxanne. Shige Kazu says, Roxanne, I don't know how to say this. Just have to tell that I love you. They just met each other this evening. <laughs> Roxanne opened his eyes. And <laughs> yeah, we just had that bit in the background. The body falls off the wall because we thought, now's probably a good idea to just remind people that there's like dead bodies and shit in the room. <laughs> Move back. She look Shige Kazu from up to down and answer with a question. Roxanne asks, Before I can answer you, you need to tell me what happened between you and your ex to me. Shige Kazu moved back and sat down before he start talking. Roxanne says, Is there anything bad in it? Shige Kazu says, No, nothing. I don't just like to enter what happened between me and her again. Roxanne says, Oh, tell me if you want a good answer from me. Shige Kazu says, Yeah, I will tell me. Shige Kazu starts Thanks, talking dog. about her ex to Roxanne. So <clears throat> after after they were done with the first flashback, um, Roxanne was wanted to know what was up with Shige Kazu's ex. So he's going to have a flashback now. Thirteen interior Shige Kazu's family home day. It's a flashback. Shige Kazu. He's speaking. There was a day that I need money. I don't have anything you guys give me a to dab? My father yeah, no sent me out of the house. I have no place to go. I don't any or all family. No phone, no cloth, nothing. I find a place to sleep still the following day. After two days, I was feeling hunger, but I see an empty house. On getting there, I check everywhere. No one is there. I sat down everywhere. It was Claude. It was night. It was Claude. It was How night. can your father do that, do you? She do that, do says. you? Not what you think. Just because I love my mom more than him, he really get angry at me. I love my mom more than my dad. So my dad sent me out of the house homeless. Roxanne says. Oh, really? Shigekazu says. Yes. Roxanne is supposed to say what now happened after you enter the house, but instead Shige Kazu says it. What now happened after you enter the house? Shige Kazu continue the story. Yes, I sleep there. Still follow. Mori. And here the story just ends. Alright, that's it. So that's so we asked for an extra like eight pages, I think it was. And he did the eight pages, and then he ended halfway through a sentence. <laughs> So that's as far as it goes. And that's the epic tale of the video that we never released on the second channel.